This San Francisco 49ers preview edition of the Sports Gameway Podcast is presented by WinBet. Bet $100 at WinBet and get a $100 free bet. Head over to sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash W-Y-N-N-B-E-T. That's sportsgamblingpodcast.com slash WinBet to claim your free bet today. This is Randy Cross. You're listening to SGPN. Let it ride. Welcome everyone to the sports gambling podcast. I'm Sean stacking the money green with my partner in picks, Ryan, real money Kramer. What's happening? Kramer. dog. I feel like we need a soft, uh, <laughs> soft rock song to sing about Trey Lance and Jimmy G Oh, wow. the heartbreak, the beauty. <laughs> is it a soap opera? I, I, I'm, Dude, I'm, should I queue up days of our league, Ryan? Because oh. there is there is drama brewing and Sam. I feel well, in the same off season, we literally had a milf hunter. <laughs> We've got the young hot kid so with tall, the beautiful, the old league. beautiful man with the chin, the old man getting pushed out for the young son. Is Jimmy G ready to go to pasture? Does he still have football left in him? Will the young stud take away? Jimmy G was 33 and 14 oh, and that, and, chin. Tra- <laughs> and that wasn't enough. For the 49ers management. All right. Yeah. We're going to talk uh, 49ers. Shout out to Randy Cross, right? We got to get him back on the show. He was a really good interview. Uh, we- Low key good interview because <laughs> yeah. we were at a p- pulling back the curtain. We were, were at a bit of a lull at that point. I think we had had a couple guests that maybe uh, didn't bring the A goods to the table and, and he kind of <laughs> profiled similarly and he flat out home run. Yeah. So. He, was a, he was a great interview. And, uh, we were going to use the Robbie Gould intro drop, but uh, Robbie Gould messed up like seven times oh, one day. on the SGPN. So we just what? said, all right, that's good, Robbie. Shout out to Robbie, who can't miss a fucking kick in but. the postseason. But he absolutely could not uh, could not deliver the uh, the station ID. <laughs> One day I'll recover that audio and we'll drop it for the Discord. But uh, he, you know, great great dude. He was a he was a good he is good on the football field. Oh, which is a question kicker. we have about the quarterback. So. We'll get to that. We got a special guest waiting in the wings, Ryan. Oh, listen to those trumpets blare. You know what that means? It's time for the National Football League. Head over to sportsgamingpodcast.com slash w y n n b e t get involved over there. They got reduced juice. Uh, the win hour every Thursday, two to three a PM Pacific. Get nice reduced juice. They have the, uh, their, their bet. That's going all month long, bet a hundred dollars, get $100 free bet. So much action over on win bet, including win bet casino open 24 hours. 100% deposit match up to $1,000. And they just released their first quarterback with five touchdowns. The first quarterback to throw for five touchdowns as its own market, Ryan, creating markets over here. Do you, do you know what Trey Lance would be, Ryan? First quarterback to throw for five touchdowns. I can almost talk myself into that bet. Is it 250 <laughs> to one? I don't know. 20 to one oh, over no, on no, Windbet. Absolutely not. Sportsgamingpodcast.com slash W Y N N B E T. Offer subjects to change terms and conditions at Windbet.com. Must be 21 or older and present in the state where play through Windbet is available. If you're someone here has a gaming problem, 1 800 522 4700. And breaking news Run Your Pool, our free NFL Survivor contest is up and running and uh, very easy to get started with the uh, run your pool free survivor contest. Uh, obviously you know how to do a survivor contest if you're listening to our show, but here's what we got for you. $500 in cash and a $250 gift card to the SGPN store. And then all you got to do, go to play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. That's play.runyourpool.com slash SGPN. If you get into our free uh, NFL survivor contest, and then if you're running your own pick them and a survivor fantasy pools, any kind of pool you want to run confidence pools, you can fully customize it with run your pool. Highly, highly recommend running your pool on run your pool as someone who's run a mm. ton of office pools. If you're listening to our podcast, you are probably the go-to like, Oh, Hey Derek, uh, you're the guy who knows about gambling or, you know, 
or uh, picking games. What are you? You're gonna be I'll the ne- one I'll running I'll the pool. I'll never forget. I was at a job and I was at a relatively low level position. I was in a help desk, so I was fixing your computer. And this guy who was fairly high, highly ranking, he yes. he's like, hey, you got to meet this other guy. He's he's like he's one of us. Brings him over. It's like the head of security. He's like, this is the guy who runs all the gambling stuff, man. It's like, whoa, bro, what are you talking about? No. Absolutely yes. not. And again, it's it's not gambling. It is just well, pick them survivor fantasy yeah, pools. Yes. Play dot run your pool dot com slash SGPN. All right, Ryan, joining us here to talk about the San Francisco mm-hmm. 49ers. You know her from Moxie Vets with Katie Mox, uh Omaha Productions ESPN, the one and only Katie Mox. Katie, thanks for coming on. Hey guys, thanks for having me. You know, I'm always down to talk 49ers. With you guys, even if that means calling you drunk on your Twitter lines <laughs> after games last year. Yes. Well, we tricked you because you're just here to answer Eli Manning <laughs> questions. Have you met the great Eli Manning? <laughs> and is his handshake as firm as I imagine? Oh, uh, God. You know, whenever I know the answer to that, you will be the first oh. person that I call. I have not <laughs> met Eli. I have received an email from Peyton Manning Ooh. that I am planning on cutting out and framing on my walls. Very nice. nice of him. That is, uh, yeah. I, I'm just, it's interesting <laughs> to imagine. Uh, Peyton sitting behind a laptop, c- cranking out an email. No, he's not writing his own emails. <laughs> Someone else uh, is writing. Is. I, I think, by, by the way, I have analyzed this multiple times, and I did ask someone at the company if they gave him my email, and it was it seemed it seemed very genuine. It was basically oh. just welcoming me and wishing me luck. But you can imagine walking out of the studio one day, and I look, and I've got an email from Peyton Manning. I was like, oh my God, like, how does this person know I exist? Tom, Tom so. McCountain is fucking with people again, <laughs> using the alias Peyton Manning, Peyton Manning on the radar. All right. We got a lot to talk about for your San Francisco 49ers. Mm. Let's just start with the, the big <laughs> issue. Jimmy G he's, uh, he's on your, uh, you got a Jimmy G bobblehead on the shelf behind you. It's beautiful by the way. Now when you, so the 49ers have made the transition. You have not as a 49ers fan. When are we getting the Trey Lance bobblehead up? Uh Oh, Oh well, that's a good, first of all, I want to say, I don't hate Trey Lance. You know, that little <laughs> intro that you did with the soap opera thing. I almost shed a tear listening to that about, you know, what Jimmy's been able to do for us, but it still wasn't good enough for the front office. I'm hopeful for Trey Lance. I'm certainly not thinking that he's going to be, you know, the second coming of Jesus Christ this year, but I'm (laughs) hopeful for him. But no, I'm, I'm not, first of all, it's so beautiful. Like how are you going to get rid of this bobblehead? You know, I'd rather have him staring at me than anybody else. (laughs) Maybe if, if Trey earns it, he could earn a spot on the uh, shelves here, but for now, Jimmy stays. Well, now that I've found, now that I have my eyes fixed on Jimmy G on your bookshelf, (laughs) It's hard to look at anything else. He's looking right at you. It is perfect just, the way just, you <laughs> just as Katie planned. <laughs> that's, that's no action. Angled him to just look at me lovingly. Because because we all remember when Jimmy G made the 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 absolutely pussy call to punt at fourth and two in the game against the Rams. Which eventually cost them the oh, game. Shanahan. Sorry, no, no. I'm, I'm yeah, saying it, it wasn't. Call? I'm, I'm, I'm playing. I'm making it what's called a joke, Sean. Oh, okay. Because sorry. it wasn't Jimmy Went G's fault. It was Kyle Shanahan's yeah. fault. And I don't know if that's yeah. getting fixed with a new young quarterback. Well, and and you know they they really and uh, we had a nice run of Katie calling in after awesome Which, 49ers the way, wins in total the total soccer mom move there. <laughs> just stomping all in. But no, Jimmy G didn't do that. That wasn't Jimmy G. Jimmy G's great. Uh you know, Jaquiski Tart. He was the uh who's the, was it Tart that dropped the uh, uh interception for the Rams that he could have Yeah. 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 So they they had yeah, their opportunity. No. Okay, we beat the Rams in the regular season for however many games in a row. And yeah, that that I think that we really lost that game because Trent Williams was injured and wasn't 100 percent. I think if we had Trent there on the O line, a lot of those things wouldn't have happened. But yeah, you got Tart that didn't get the interception there. And then, you know, you had that call by Shanahan, which Shanahan for the offensive mastermind that he is. He sometimes tries to get a little bit too cute and out coaches himself in certain things and ends up losing big games. I actually blame Shanahan for the Super Bowl loss, not Jimmy G. So oh. I, I, yeah, I, and it was, but I'm, I'm so happy to be talking about this again, guys. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, I, it you felt, sound like it, you sound like Robbie Gould when I brought up that that they, hey, you guys got a really good season, lost in the <laughs> NFC Championship game. He's like, bringing that thanks, up. Sean. <laughs> 
Uh, look, I, I mean, watched that episode, and I, I do recall that. He was, was really was busting my chops. I, I it, appreciate it. It does seem like we we might be closer to Katie than I initially uh, could have imagined. In that, maybe Jimmy G wasn't the problem in this team, right? This is a team that you could even argue they overperformed. They were. Katie mentioned it. Trent Williams. They were destroyed in it with the injuries. They weren't a lucky yeah. team. They were There was nothing about this team where you point to and say, "Oh yeah, they're totally." You know they're going to regress forward this year or backwards this year. If anything, you could argue they would have. Yeah, I would have circled them as a team. Hey, they might take a step forward. They have a stable quarterback who's not going to lose you a game. Uh, that the coach maybe he's a regular season god, but uh, and he's made some interesting. You know the Sean McVay thing. He that was totally like Sean McVay was just committed. I'm going rock every single time. And and McVay was like, you're not going to go yeah. rock six times in a row. And he's <laughs> like, fuck yeah, I am. Uh, look at me teach my dog this horrible <laughs> trick in the pool. So I think if anything, I'm circling the Niners as a team that, you know, you love the, what the defense can do. You have questions about the back end, but as a team, just reflecting from last year, the coach fucked up. The coach lost, lost them the opportunity. It was a single moment, right? The quarterback got them there and, and they did enough to advance in the postseason, right? With not with not the best defensive set, like they had holes in the, this team. So yeah. again, a lot of words to say, and maybe we can throw because I was worried that uh, Katie was going to come with all this Trey Lance hype, <laughs> and, and it was going to be awkward conversation conversation city. But it sounds like we're still saying, "Hey, uh, we're not sure about this decision." Uh, 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 cautiously optimistic. Yeah. Cautiously optimistic. Now, I do believe in Shanahan and I do believe in John Lynch. I think they're an incredible team and what they've been able to put together has been phenomenal. So, do I think that Trey Lance eventually is going to be this guy? Yeah, I hope so. And I have that trust in them. But you have to be realistic about his basically a rookie season. I mean, he played and he started in two games just last year. And even when he came out, I think he played a total of six games. Half the time, Jimmy would run the ball all the way down for him or throw the ball all the way down for him. And then they just give it to him at the goal line, which I didn't really like that either. I thought that was kind of cheap on their part. But where I think Shanahan really screwed up last year was the way that he dealt with the Trey Lance and Jimmy G situation by all of training camp saying, oh, we don't know who the starter is going to be. They knew that it was going to be Jimmy G. It wasn't going to be Trey. He wasn't ready yet. He should have had that trust in Jimmy for that first year. I feel like it caused a lot of problems with the quarterbacks. It caused a lot of problems with the locker room. You're kind of making people choose sides. I feel like that is where the problems with the Niners went last year. If they came out and they're like, yes, we got Trey. Yeah, obviously number three pick overall. He's going to be our guy. But this year, you know, he's going to sit this year. This year, it's going to be Jimmy and had that trust. I think there would have been a lot more synergy in the first half of the season with the Niners, you know, they got better towards the end, but I feel like that was Shannon. Well, and it's also interesting. Year. Like what could have uh, Jimmy G done last Nothing. year to secure his job? If you, if he wins the super bowl, and do they still replace him? Game. You know, if he gets to the I, super bowl, do they still replace him? If he wins it, do they still replace him? Yes. I mean, going back to, well, this cause they spent plan, all the, right? yeah, they, they spent all the draft capital on him. They I, traded the fuck I, up. I still like, they were a win now team when they traded up for Trey Lance, which I was still trying to wrap my head around. It's like, you know, yeah. load up on the offensive line. Trent Williams is great, but the guy is like getting up there in age. He's he's gonna get older, and and you 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 need someone to left tackle, even maybe even a right tackle. Like they need more, um, you know, more certainty on the offensive line. There's definitely you could have got a cornerback. You could have done just built a stronger roster. Just ran it out with Jimmy G. So the parallel Trey, are, Trey Lance, just real quick, Trey Lance. You know, Katie keeps using the word hope, and I think that's probably the best word you can use because yeah. since 2017, Trey Lance has attempted 409 passes. A lot of those were at the FCS 2017? level. Yes, all the way. So in the past five years, he's averaging 80 passes a year because there was like the COVID year. We might be one year that. he only he's had playing catch. Yeah, I, I put out I put about 70 passes in uh, the Hall of Fame game <laughs> for the Fantasy Football Expo. It, it's just. Yeah, maybe he is the greatest thing since sliced bread, but it's just that you it's so much projection. And to to Katie's point, it's like last year was kind of his rookie year, but really your rookie year is the first year you're the starter every game. And I think there's gonna be some uh growing pains for him. So unique sc scenario, right? Where you're also coming into a situation where there's already winning expectations. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I thought about this. This doesn't happen a lot, right? You don't often have a guy, but Aaron Rodgers kind of started his career like this. Brett Favre had taken that Packers team all the way to face 
Eli Manning and the New York Football Giants, <laughs> where they ended his career with an interception in overtime. Aaron Rodgers' yeah. first year, right? You would say that's he's joining a good team, right? That team was the one I believe they were the one seed. They went six and ten. Yeah. Aaron Rodgers, he had sat on the bench for three years. Yeah. You would I, you would argue like Aaron Rodgers is like probably the ceiling that Trey Lance could achieve if well, everything it's works. Mo- it's most people's ceiling, I would imagine. So from a career arc, why are the expectations now? I, I get it. We have Nick, like Nick. We have some sexy pieces. Debo, George well, Kittle. Yeah. I, so Nick I think Bosa. I, I think the comparison that that Trey Lance truthers would bring up is Patrick Mahomes. He sat for a year. He came in his second year on a good team to replace Alex Smith, which you could maybe mm. kind of compare to Jimmy G. So that would be some similarities there. Or even Lamar Jackson. Lamar Jackson got in like four or five games his rookie year and then, you know, second year as a Mah- starter Mah- really blew up. But Lamar Jackson had supreme success at the at the at, college at, level. At, at a major college Pat- program. Patrick Mahomes had some tape in in a in the Big Twelve. Yeah, was thrown for like <laughs> You know, 400, 500 yards in the Big 12. Trey Lance is no offense. He was on a run, a run first team. You yeah. know, I get that he has a strong. I, a lot of dudes I saw at the Fantasy Football <laughs> Expo have had a strong arm. <laughs> Trust me, they're not <laughs> starting. They're not playing in the national. I football. mean, uh, Katie, what it, it it seems like on the outside of 49ers world, Trey Lance is polarizing. Is it is inside the 49ers circle when you're just talking to your fellow Niners fans? Is it as polarizing or is everyone just in no. on Trey Lance? Uh, well, I, I laughed when you called them the Trey Lance truthers because yes. I really think that that's what these crazy people are. Do you know that Trey Lance <laughs> has received more votes for the NFL MVP than Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady and and Patrick Mahomes? It's like, who are you people, and why are you donating your money to this? So yes, he had two good throws recently, a two seventy six yard deep passes wow. to rookie Danny Gray once against the Packers in the opening preseason game. And then I guess this week for the 49ers Vikings joint practice. And I understand that he doesn't really have to do that much on offense. Everything is already in place for him, for this kid to succeed. He's got a good O-line. He's got Trent Williams, great defense. It's a run game. I feel like Shanahan has everything to make this kid successful. But to your point, when you look at people like Aaron Rodgers there's still a lot that's going on in these games. He hasn't been up against a good defense. And if you look at him in um, training camp, sorry, there's a siren going by because I live in New York city. These hot takes. If you look at him (laughs) in training camp, he doesn't always do that well against the Niners first defense, which makes a lot of sense. It's a great defense, but you're going to be up against the bucks. You're going to (laughs) be up against a lot of really big teams with great defenses. So you have to expect him not to be that great. I feel like I'm on uh, an Island all by myself. It's not like Trey Lance is the greatest thing that's happened since sliced bread. I'm hopeful. Like I said, I will root with him with every fiber in my being, but I have to be realistic that he's not necessarily going to be great right outside of the gate. And and I think the truthers would say we're going to (laughs) be Sean is a truther. No, no, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, he's got a burner account. (laughs) The truth is out there about Trey Lance. And we're going to find out in 2022. Um, I think they would say, Hey, they're going to run an offense. Like, you know, somewhat similar to the Ravens. It's going to be run first. I mean, there was a, you know, to, to the 49ers point in the, uh, in the NFC championship game, before they went to the uh, super bowl, they had a game where they only let Jimmy G throw the ball 10 times. So maybe there's a world where Trey Lance is a much better runner of the football, obviously than Jimmy G they're going to build around that. There's going to be a lot of read option type stuff, and they're going to put him in a, in a place to really succeed and dominate. To me, it's just, it's just tough to get there. Cause there's just so I, many questions. I'm just going to say this out loud. They, yes. they, okay. they were, they were the fifth, uh, fifth DVOA offense. And you would initially, when if you were looking at this, and I told you that they were the a top five DVOA offense, number five, you would be like, well, they must be like number one in rushing, and probably somewhere in the middle of the pack passing, fifth passing, fourth okay. rushing. It's not like he like I get why he's not sexy. It this is the the the, the bleeding in of the fantasy world, right? Yeah, Jimmy G's ceiling wow. sucks, but his floor is is right next to his ceiling. Yeah. And, and and that is to operate like he can operate a well-oiled machine to its to near its efficiency, like max efficiency. I don't think they were winning much more than 10 games last year with wh- everything that happened. So I don't know if you I would 
great yeah, is Trey Lance winning twelve games last year? I, that this is where I'm concerned if I'm a one because you're 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 doing that thing where like when they fire the coach that wins nine games every year and all of a sudden it's a, it they just completely bottom out because they, they like established sometimes works best and and I think the the thing that scares me the most is just I mean we talked to Robbie Gold earlier we we we've heard it friend from other player friend of the program it's not like people are running to say wow. Like just wait and see. Like they're not doing that thing where it's like you guys are talking all this shit. Just wait and see. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, no, he's you know he's doing a, he's doing a great job. Well, because I think I think the veterans, especially, they're scared. They they like Jimmy G. They, there was go. a there oh. was there were guys that oh. were clearly playing for Jimmy G. Mm. And Debo Samuel. I mean, obviously, most of it's uh, about the money, but I think he probably liked being on the team with with Jimmy G. Yeah. What what's your thought on the locker room? Have they completely turned towards? Trey Lance, I imagine that some vets are still kind of questioning. Well, you saw how many people came out last year in defense of Jimmy G, even former players yeah. like Richard Sherman. Like, there is a reason why these guys love Jimmy G, the type of leader that he is. Obviously, he's a class act. I mean, the Niners have thrown a lot of bullshit at him in the last two years, and he has handled everything with such grace. Again, great leader great guy, friends with everyone. And he is a winner. I know he's not the sexiest pick. He can't do all of the bells and whistles, but the guy wins. His record speaks for itself. The Niners, basically the same team without him suck. And then with him, we're good. So I think the players recognize that, but I think they also trust in the organization. And I feel like a training camp, everything that you hear from these guys is just crazy. I mean, we basically had the cheetah saying that Tua was the most accurate <laughs> quarterback that he's ever that been thrown yeah, to. Where are those, he just where are those uh, comments from IU or Devo where it's like, oh, Trey Lance, he's the best, blah, blah, blah. You don't hear any of that. Uh, also, well, I think they're not jackasses, maybe. I mean, it's like <laughs> also, also who was it? Devontae Adams is saying that the Hall of he's calling Derek Carr a Hall of Fame quarterback <laughs> instead of Aaron Rodgers or in the same realm as Aaron Rodgers, which is ridiculous. But I feel like those guys, because they left incredible quarterbacks and then they went to lesser quarterbacks, they have to say that kind of stuff, right? They yeah. have to build themselves up to feel better about the choices that they made for money. It's not about the money. Like the it's Niners about yeah. the same. It's not about the money. It's about having the opportunity to play with Tua. Uh, that's, that's the, the duck quarterback in the league. The duck sound effect Play is the new to a drop. I don't know why it's so simple and silly, but I enjoy it. Uh, um, Sean, Sean. What, what else before we get to the schedule ride? Well, I was gonna say we were we were a little all over the place last year. Katie joined us to discuss the Niners. Yeah, what she, did what she were, predicted? Fourteen and three. Okay, they, uh, they she went. also she liked the over and 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 took them to win the division. They were actually ten and seven. Yes. They were ten and seven, um, in nine and eight against the spread. Was I, I'm showing the win total was a push. Did we pick it at nine and a half or ten? I forget. Uh, what did I have them going? You because have, I remember Katie was upset after the show. She's like, oh, I didn't realize you were such a <laughs> hater. I didn't realize it. And then, but I and also. Then and I then Ryan became the hater, yes. and you were my friend. I became oh. I, as so, there was a there was a switch that got flipped, and I rode them in the playoffs, and they won me a lot of money. We so. we selected it at ten and a half. Actually, oh wow, okay. you picked so, it at eighty nine, eight and nine. You locked up the under. Uh, you you threw out missed playoffs plus one fifty. So, so I missed that. <laughs> I was ten and seven, so I nailed it. Oh, uh, exactly right. Um, and if, if this was you earlier, you'd be like, "Oh, why are we not? Why are we there not be? a fucking press we, release?" We've had a couple. Not- we've, I, I mean, out of these teams, we've had a number where we went directly I, on. I feel the like number. one of us has got it exactly uh, most of the time, or yes. something like Madden would say. Um, <laughs> I was He's re- one of those guys who will. Get I was really good picking them. It's eleven and six against the spread. You were nine and eight. Okay. Um. Because they're 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 definitely an interesting team. Again, o- overall pretty solid roster. Um, offensive line, PFF has them 14th, probably a little higher. I mean, again, like Trent Williams is getting old. They lost Alex Mack, center. Alex that's Mack, young player. And uh, that's not a good thing for uh, the uh, the young rookie. Yeah. Before before we get to the schedule though, uh, Katie, any of the draft picks the Niners had that you think you mentioned Danny Gray? He's interesting. Um, Drake Jackson, we liked as a first Drake rounder. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And then Drake Jackson uh, out of USC is the is the biggest one for me. He really compliments Bosa. I mean, we've been looking for an accomplice for Bosa for a long time. He was the most double teamed um, guy at last year, and so to add someone else there, and I like what I've been seeing out of training camp with him so far. I think he's going to be huge. 
Yeah, and TDP, the the running back now with Elijah Mitchell, I think he's dealing with what, like a hamstring or something. He could get run, yeah, and fine. and uh, that's pretty interesting. But it, so as far as uh, any key departures you're worried about, guys, you lost Raheem Oster, uh, maybe I don't know. Not really. I mean, I think the Niners do such a good job at depth. I mean, I think we're going to add about six running backs this year. That's what they're trying to have in there. So I feel like we have a lot of injuries specifically at running back, but now we've got Trey Lance and, you know, Debo is still going to be used as the wide back and they're trying to get six running backs in there in the rotation. So I just feel like that what Shanahan does such a good job of is creating a lot of depth. So even though there are departures, you don't feel them as much. Except for Jimmy G. That's my that's probably the worst <laughs> departure. What well, last question on Jimmy G. Although I'm sure he'll come up again. <laughs> it might come up again. <laughs> Your relationship goal should be find someone that, you know, thinks of you like Katie thinks of Jimmy G. Because not only she she defends him, but with like good, solid analysis. Uh what do you, where do you think Jimmy G ends up? Oh, it, yeah. uh, it seems like Seattle's the only place right now. Maybe Cleveland, if Watson ends up sitting for the, it, they, if he ends up getting suspended for the entire year, like, how is this not, guy not going to be on a football team or, or where does he end up? What's your, what's your prediction there? Honestly, I think it's so sad. Obviously his shoulder injury impacted. I think he would, if he didn't have to have shoulder injury this year and he was able to participate more in training camps, he probably would have been picked up in the off season. I was kind of hopeful when Zach Wilson went down. I mean, obviously not hopeful. I would never want him to have a torn ACL, but if he was going to be out for the whole season, I thought that would be a good place for Jimmy. One, he'd be in New York where I live. <laughs> and two, Katie's you know, already you like, know <laughs> maybe I run into him outside his building. Who knows? It's fate. I, I was, mean, just who knows? I was there with binoculars, uh, bird watching. <laughs> Yeah, I Sorry. thought the coaching staff knows him well. That could be an interesting place for him. Obviously, I think the Browns are a ready team right now. That would be great for them as well. The Watson situation, I don't really know how that's going to shake out. I did hear that they're close to some kind of agreement, so it might not go to actually back to court again, which maybe would mean 12 games or whatever, but that would be a good place for him. But the Seahawks would just, that would break my heart. That would be the worst thing to have. I'm so happy that Russell Wilson is out of the division. I can't wait to see the Seahawks just suck. And then if Jimmy <laughs> goes there, just not going to be as fun for yeah. me. Jimmy G with the chip on his shoulder with DK Metcalf and Tyler Lockett. Uh, I, I, it, it, it's it, as a football fan, it gets interesting. I'd be, I would, this would, I, here's my concern of him coming to the jets. I, I don't know if you want him in the same locker room as Joe Flacco. That I don't know if he can handle that kind of heat. Like J Jimmy's, Jimmy's a Jimmy's a good guy, too, too Italian like American, <laughs> good looking, has eyes you can get lost in. But Joe Flacco, he's a he's a piece of shit from Philly, Delaware, oh, wherever. Come on, so Ryan. you gotta watch out. It's it's just a, it's an unhealthy situation. I'm worried about Delaware Jimmy is a great. State. He needs to go somewhere friendly, like back to, back home to Bill. Like how for help to help Bill retire. Maybe, I, Maybe Mac Jones get, I, I take, gets hurt and they need someone last minute. Seattle, Seattle seems well, like a fun spot. For he's him. going to people Cleveland. are saying for him to go back to Tampa and go behind Tom Brady again for one year, which I don't think he Ooh. wants to do. The reality is Jimmy G has already made so much money. He never has to work again, but he's a good football player. And, and I hope that he gets a starting job. Katie, you just unlocked it for me. I just had an aha moment. Brady's going to make more money when, when he's out of football calling games. He realized he had his moment in training camp. That's why he's now stepped away for a personal moment. It, they're just working out the details. Mm. Jimmy G's coming to Tampa. Jimmy G you, to hey, Tampa. Hey, get get your uh, get your towel, Katie. We're going south. <laughs> We're gonna go. I mean, a lot of Italian Americans down in Florida. It's where they go to retire. Sense. He can still get some good pasta. Jimmy G with a nice tan. I mean. <laughs> I've heard, I've heard him. I don't think he wants to go and sit behind Tom Brady no. again. Can you imagine? No, That's good. how you start it's, out. Then no, you no. go, you start for the Niners, you get to a Super Bowl, two championship games, and then and then you go back and. Sit I mean, honestly, Tom Brady it, and this is a team I haven't heard a lot of people talk about. Why would the Lions not take a shot on Jimmy G? Oh, dude, for he's me, not a Dan Campbell guy. But no, but is is Jared Goff? <laughs> I mean, Jared, the disdain oh, that Dan Campbell. Jared Goff's not anybody guy. <laughs> yeah. The disdain that Dan Campbell clearly has for Jared Goff. <laughs> Jimmy G is a gamer, and I think Dan Campbell could, um, you know, Jimmy, that would resonate with him. And you're playing in the dome. Jimmy, you got Jamison Williams. You got some decent receiving. Jimmy count. G is on record as talking about how he prefers to play in cities with good, uh, good marinara. You know, 
That's true. Well, you know, there's some, there's some decent Italian. New York. Food. Exactly. Yeah. He's got. He, come on. Don't don't embarrass yourself by saying Detroit has a good Italian. Ah, food. come on. Ryan. No, no offense to Detroit, but. All right. Let's uh let's get to the schedule. Before right. we do that, shout out. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was gonna say shout out Odds Trader. That's right. Odds Trader is your one stop <laughs> shop. You can compare all the major sports books. Uh, again, look at get the different sign up codes. Find the best promos. They got you covered. Play by play updates, live scoring, and bet tracking, player stats, key game stats, projected game day weather, essentially everything you need for your game day bets. All you got to do is go to oddstrader.com slash blue wire, O D D S trader.com slash blue wire. Again, it's the best place to compare odds, uh, get handicap and info, play by play updates. Again, your one stop shop, oddstrader.com slash blue wire. We're also brought to you by Sleeper. That's right. You already probably use Sleeper for your fantasy football league. Uh, I mean, they got already four million users, and now the over under game, and it's it's going to be pretty awesome for the NFL. You'll have your fantasy uh, matchup right there, and then you can get in on the over under game right from the fantasy platform. And of course, we got a sweet sign up code for you to get a nice bonus. Sleeper.com/sgp on your phone, get a hundred percent deposit bonus up to one hundred dollars. Sleeper.com/sgp, and if you already have Sleeper. Just click the over under tab. Use the promo code SGP. Get the sign up bonus. Terms and conditions apply. See sleepers terms of use for details. Brian, let's talk schedule. What do we All got right. here? Let me. Uh, uh, it, it's it's uh, per win total. It's the tenth easiest. Okay. Which is a slight step mm-hmm. up from last year. They were right in the middle of the pack uh, at sixteenth. We start off the season with a road trip to the Bears, which we've been talking about all off season because oh. holy crap, Trey Lance laying a touchdown. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> Seattle at home after that. I mean, a young quarterback is a road favorite. My my Trey Lance no, bias no, no, no. aside, Best that is always a, a laying a touchdown week one as a road favorite is a tough spot. We, we I mean all right, let me finish. Sure. At at Denver on Sunday night football, and then we have the Rams at home on Monday night football. There's a lot, uh, a lot going on there. Uh, this is a tough start. I do think Chicago players not wanting to be there. A little bit of a red flag. I'm with you though. The 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 point spread is fishy. They definitely are going to win, win against Seattle, right? We think. Well, and again, uh oh. Here here's the NFL. Where has is done the a, floor here? Th- no, the NFL has done a great job when they put out their schedule. S- somehow, uh, you know, Russell Wilson is playing Seattle week one somehow, uh, you know, uh, Carolina, ha- Carolina oh. is playing Cleveland pre Baker Mayfield trade. And now we wow. see week three, the 49ers <laughs> are playing the Seahawks. They, that could be setting up for the Jimmy G return game. No, the 49ers are playing the Broncos. No, oh, week, week two. They're sorry, week Seahawks. two. Yes, but week three they but see I'm Russell Wilson G. again. They don't even get the Russell Wilson leaves the division. They don't lose him. They got to go to Denver to play. This is this is a very difficult start. I'm I'm gonna let Katie go first because I don't want to I don't want to set the tone by going zero four ahead of her. <laughs> but uh, what are we thinking, Katie? For the first four games or yes. for yeah. the for those season? First four games. I think that they win against the bears and I think they win against Seattle. I could see them going either two and two or three and one. Mm. But I'm optimistic. I said 13 last year. I see them (laughs) right at 10 wins. All right. So, but but if Jimmy G's on the Seahawks, who are you picking in that game? (laughs) Oh, don't make her do I'm that, right? Still gonna, I'm still gonna pick the Niners because he's okay. got to learn. I don't know if that's enough time for him to learn everything. I'll go. I'll go two and two. But I think they. I think they win the Rams game, and then I think they, yeah, they have owe, some they losses the that may surprise you early on. I think this team, to Katie's point, I think they could catch their stride late. But I think early on it might be a little tough. So I'm gonna go two and two. I, I think. Man, the, the Broncos spots. Th- yeah, I'll go. T- I'll go two and two as well. Katie, you're you're at three, three and one, three or two and two. No, 
I'm two and two. I'm two and two. I'm optimistic about three and one, but I will go two and two. I'm not sold on the Broncos this year at all. I know they have Russell Wilson, Mm. who I love. Broncos, let's ride. Broncos Nation, (laughs) let's ride. That's a great Russell Wilson. I feel like they thank you. They lost Vic Fangio. I don't know how their defense is going to be. And there's still a lot of question marks there. So I don't know that they're going to be great right out the gate. We should have had Katie on for the Broncos preview (laughs) too, just just for that sweet Russ hater. We don't have a good Russ hater perspective. So it's good to it's good to get that. Uh, just, just wait till I talk about Matthew Stafford. Oh. I, I do have some inside Iggy. Apparently, yeah. I mean, I think I shared this with you, but I, it does sound like the Broncos' offense may be struggling a little bit more than is being led on in the very pro Broncos uh, beat reporter media. All right, so we're all at two and two. At, uh, again, they they tough start to the season. They uh, three of their only three home games in the first eight, which is an interesting anomaly. Yeah, that's why I kind of Carolina. Because Levi's Stadium is so hot with how it's positioned in the sun, even if it's 70 degrees, if you're sitting on the sun side, it's like 95 degrees. So after the first few seasons at Levi's, they have started either only having us have night games or having a lot of away games at the at the front of the season because it's just too hot. So that Seahawks game is going to be hot as shit. Is that what you're saying? A little inside Iggy there. Mm. Uh, it's Katie, good info. Katie Hell yeah, yeah. I, if, you're, I, if you're not a season ticket holder, try to buy on the shade side. Oh, that's. <laughs> That's like Dodger Stadium. You got to be on the third base side. Everyone knows that. At Carolina, at Atlanta, back to back road to games. Kansas City coming to town. Ooh. At Los Angeles for another battle with the Rams. They typically, I mean, Kyle Shanahan typically gets McVay's lunch money, right? Isn't that the way that? Yes. That and, bird- I, and, I, and I still think that can happen. I th- the Rams, I'm not super high on the Rams this year. They've got that star studded cast. But they don't really have depth, specifically at defense. They spent way too much money last year to win. And then they have to get rid of people. Von Miller is gone now, Wentworth retired. If Aaron Donald or Jalen Ramsey or Cooper Cup goes down, they are screwed. And if you think about Stafford, they're saying that his elbow isn't that big of a deal, yet they pulled him out of practice. So I think it's a little bit more serious than they're leading on. Mm. I, I do think the injury stuff's going to hamper uh, the Rams. <clears throat> I like all this uh, divisional shade. She got teed up. <laughs> Ah, uh, geez. All right. So back to back road games, they should, uh, they'll split with the Rams this year, right? Y- yeah. At, Is at that the, very the least. responsible thing to do at the very least? I think uh, they'll split with the Rams chiefs at home. That the, the Rams are coming off their buy for that too. FYI. I don't know. I'm going to go uh, and Panthers and Falcons, both winnable spots, but it's back to back road games. I don't see them losing against tough, the Falcons. Tough stretch for the Panthers saints, Cardinals, Niners all at home and then at uh, at Rams Bucks so that's gonna be a tough spot for the Panthers uh, already. It is a home. Yeah, I, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, I'm high on the Falcons. So do I? <laughs> do they? Lo- are they? Can they lose the Falcons? Yeah, is that uh, a responsible thing? To I do? don't. Okay, well, here's the thing: they <laughs> have lost to the Falcons oh, that right. year that they had a near perfect season. Who did they lose to? The lowly Falcons. So the Falcons weirdly have like a sneaky thing with the Niners. They end up. That's always a trap game for the Niners. However, I think this year, especially because it's at the beginning of the season, I don't think that the Niners are losing that. One game. and three. I'm gonna go. Uh, th- I mean, they have three road games, and then their home home game is <clears> against <throat> Kansas City. Yeah. So I think. Two and two is wow. reasonable. So four and four so far. Trey Lance is the quarterback in this model. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, I, Katie, what do you have? Hey, what do you- I, I'm two and two as well. I think they can win against the Panthers and they can win against the Falcons. They're going to split this season with the Rams, so one of those is going to be a loss, and then I think they'll likely lose to the Chiefs. If Jimmy G was the quarterback, they would be doing better in my model. Oh, Jimmy G <laughs> would be like eight and zero oh at yeah. this point. So. Six. Six and two if they uh somehow trade Trey Lance and I mean, start Jimmy G. Before. Nothing else I want Kyle Shanahan to be punished for his his uh, transgression. His cockiness. Yeah. All right. What do you got? Imagine and obviously I don't even want to put this I'm not even gonna say it. I don't want to put the juice out there. But what happens if Trey Lance gets injured and oh, then you no. trade away Jimmy G? What are you gonna do? Well, then you got Brock Purdy. We liked him at <laughs> Iowa State. He's fun. All right. Uh lot then we have uh, coming off the bye week, okay. bye week nine. We have Chargers at home Sunday night football. That's that's going to be a test because it, the weakness and we didn't really get into it, but the weakness of this defense is going to be that secondary. So Herbert, uh, yep. Mahomes, like there are a couple quarterbacks here, not a ton, but a couple Stafford who should be able to test it. Then we have at Cardinals. This game is down south in Mexico City, I believe. Uh, we then we then Ooh. have we then have the Saints. At home and the Dolphins at home. 
We've got two two coming west. Um Death laughed off of the noise. A lot of ums in there. Uh yeah, so Chargers at Cardinals, aka south of the border in Mexico, and then Saints Dolphins at home. Three home games, one international, not even a true road game. Mm. The, the, I I have a hard time seeing them getting a shootout and beating the Chargers, but the Chargers can't stop the run. This could be a really interesting matchup. I, I think the Saints both, have a Bosa brothers going up against yeah, each other too. Yeah, which I can't get enough Bosa brothers mic'd up. They're just they just sound like they're they're modern day cavemen. That's what they are. They're cavemen. So Have you seen what Nick Bosa looks like this year? I mean, the guy is yoked. <laughs> he he's, really is. He's jacked. like very attractive looking, also very theory looking. I wouldn't want to go up against him. Yeah. Uh Dolphins at home. He's no Jimmy G. <laughs> that's a that's a win. Uh Dolphins at home, that's a win. What, Saints. What daddy's coming home game? Mike McDaniel what, showing yeah, off the new toys think, to Daddy Shanahan? I think I think they got them there. Chargers, that's gonna be tough. They are coming off the bye, but hmm. I'll go. Jeez, I'll go two and two again. The, the chart, no, real quick to note because it, you can't. It's hard to look past primetime games, but the Chargers do have the Chiefs on deck when they're yeah. playing the okay. Niners. Okay, yeah, look ahead. I'll still go two and two. Look, I'm. Yeah, I I would. I'll probably go two and two on this one too. I I'm really high on the Chargers this year. Actually, I think it's Justin Herbert's year. I think they can win their division. I think they could get the best of the Chiefs. You know, Herbert threw for five thousand yards last year. I think he could do it again. They've added who did they add from the uh, Chicago Bears to their defense? Why am I blanking on his name right now? Khalid Mack. Khalid Khalil Mack, Mack. Right? Khalil Mack. Yep. They added Khalil Mack. So I, I feel like the Chargers are going to be a tough one to beat. But to your point, Ryan, maybe it's a kind of a look ahead situation so they could slip up against the Niners there. Although I do think that the Bosa brothers are going to be locked in. You know, obviously they want to yeah. win that game for the family crown. And uh, who are the other who are the other two it's, games? It's Saints and Dolphins at Car or the well, Cardinal, Saints, Cardinals. Cardinals, yeah. There's it, no. I'll go two and two. Yeah, two and two. Because I, I I do. Sean think, and I were on the same page. Yeah, I mean, because I just there's a lot of games. It's it they are one of the tougher teams to predict because, again, obviously the questions at quarterback, how they match up as a run heavy team. You would imagine some people can scheme around that, some can't. It's yeah. it's gonna be tough. I just the, the super high ceiling where they go twelve Actually, and five, I, thirteen and four. It's tough for me to get. There. I'm going one and three again. You're one and three, right? Wow. Because <laughs> Ryan's picked every team's under. Just so you know, okay. Not not every team. <laughs> well, the Giants. How how are they doing this the, year? <laughs> they they're my model like Tyrod. <laughs> Tyrod is getting some looks with the first team. It doesn't mean anything. About Daniel Jones, it's not oh my God. any sort of indication. We're just gonna. Well, you're so nervous this year. I'm Super not, team assemble. I'm not Super nervous team at all. Assemble. I would not be surprised if Tyrod Taylor at some point in the season becomes QB one. What I saw from him versus Daniel Dimes just in the first preseason game, it seems like Tyrod's the guy. And I love fucking Tyrod Taylor. He literally my Wi-Fi password. He, Sean, it is confirmed. Yes. <laughs> Literally, my Wi-Fi password for Ryan's. years at my house. I've I'm on record. He, we're we're, we're going to be talking Former uh, Hokies. Hokies. My all time, like Vic went to Virginia Tech. Tyrod Taylor's my guy. That's my mo most favorite guy. I am getting a Tyrod Giants jersey. You can't throw this yep. Tyrod shade. You know, if Tyrod is the starting quarterback for the second half of this year into next year, and Daniel Jones is gone, and they're drafting a new guy, that's fine. Last time Dable and, and Tyrod were together, I believe they were going to the postseason on the Buffalo Bills. So shout out to the playoffs. Shout out to winning quarterbacks. Take your shit somewhere else, Sean. <laughs> All right, what do we at? Right, right. You're just getting mini me all fired up. Tyrod. Uh, last, well, not last four. Next four. Okay. Bucks at home. Yep. Which who knows? Jimmy G could be playing there with Tom Brady <laughs> having stepped down from football to go into the broadcast booth. To pursue his at, no true one, passion. No one's his talking son. about how his salary is is more to go call uh, games. So, and no one knows if he's gonna be good. This is no. what's so crazy. Tom Brady is an incredible quarterback, and he's got someone running his socials. That's the person that has the personality. When he talks, he does not have that big of a personality. <laughs> you think he's gonna be like charismatic and engaging? I don't think so. Like, no. I don't how do you throw that much money at him? Now I know he is he'll work harder than anybody else to be the best. I just don't think he has that innate ability to have the gift of gab and to be engaging and funny. 
I just don't see I, it. I love it. You heard it here first. Katie Mox thinks Tom Brady is going to be another booger. Yeah, booger, <laughs> yeah. booger McFarland. That's a pretty. Uh, <laughs> I don't know hey. if I'll give him that floor, but yeah, I, booger Brady. <laughs> Them hosting a podcast. I just can't believe together. how much money they're giving him without knowing how he's actually going to be. Uh, I it's you're you're basically made it, making the early bet that he's going to be the guy that all the older white men want to buy life insurance from eventually because <laughs> that's what it comes down to. Like Troy Aikman can fucking hawk life insurance. He's going to be like the, the next the Joe Theismann. <laughs> shout out to Joe Theismann, friend of the program, uh, and shout out to Levar Arrington for that hit on Troy Aikman. Oh. All right, so Bucks at home at Seattle on Thursday night football. That that's Ooh. a tricky spot there. Then we got the Commandos coming to town at home, then at Las Vegas against the Raiders, a, a late season uh, non conference road game. I I don't I I don't love that uh, for. Katie, I don't you, love that you for the Niners. The, you should go to that game. the The Raiders Stadium is a fun experience in Vegas. All right, so. I would love to. Well, it's hard now that I live in New York. It's like I got to fly all the way across the country. But yeah, quite. The I hike. would like to go to a game there. We'll Kramer. make. Well, I'm sure we could find a way to make that. Yeah. So again, Bucks coming to town. Bucks generally, you know, they shut down teams that need to run the ball. Sean, we said this. We we said that that is the yeah. the exact kind of team that I don't know if I'm. So boy, this is a tough. This is a, whether it's a, a tough matchup or a tough a spot. Threat. Yeah, the only yeah. game I have here where it's like, okay, obviously, is this uh, the Washington Commando? Commanders is a hundred percent a win. But they they could really be a good team against the run as well. They have a very dominant interior to their defensive think, line. Chase I Young think, come, could be back. Yeah, at Seattle might actually be a little sneaky, and then in oh. in Las Vegas could be tough. I'm going two and two again. I got them just as like a middling team. So wait, wait, it's it's Seattle, it's Raiders, it's Bucks, and it's Commanders. Yeah, exactly. At, so, so you have the Bucks I and the Commanders at home, and you have the Seahawks on the road on a Thursday night, and the Raiders on the road. All right, Seahawks, Commanders are wins. Bucks, I'll take that as a loss, and the Raiders. Ooh, this is a tough one. I'll give them a win against the Raiders. I'll go three one in this one. Are the Seahawks just gonna really suck? Is that, that certainly? Uh, I mean, yeah. again, they could. Eh. Yeah. And I'll, I'll uh, unless Jimmy G goes there, which then it would be. Then I, what would I do with myself on Sundays? I can't even think about. <laughs> Katie can't even live in that world. Sure. Worth no. Can you imagine I've got him sitting here staring at me, and then he's in a Seahawks jersey. <laughs> that is gross. That neon. It's I'd not. Have, I'd have. I'd have to turn him around. <laughs> you can't no, make the, eye the neon doesn't doesn't match his beautiful eyes. Um, no. Worth noting, worth noting that the uh, who do the, the the Chiefs, who do they have at the end of the season? The Raiders. Yeah, in a bit of a sandwich spot at Pittsburgh, and then the Chiefs week eighteen, uh, with the Niners in between. That's going to be their big game. I will I will step out on the ledge. I do think they sh the Seahawks should just suck, but that is a yes. tough spot. Two and two, two and two, or one and three. Am I going full okay. full floor well, case? I'm one and three. Much. Let's do well, it. All right, right. Hot three. take. <laughs> I'm sorry, Katie. It's he was right personal. last year on his on his prediction. So <laughs> nailed ten and his seven. Negative Nancy prediction. All right, you and you guys are both two and two. Yep. All right, last game of no, the season. No, I'm three and one. Oh, I'm yeah, three sorry, and she's one. three and one. I'm sorry, Katie. Once again, apologies. Yeah, uh, if, if we the extra win here, please. <laughs> Katie said, uh, pulling back the curtain. Katie asked if there was anything specific she should bring to the show, and I said thick fucking skin or something <laughs> like that. Because Ryan knew he was gonna. <laughs> no, you said it's it. It was a typo, and it said. Think ass skin. And I was like, think ass skin. Oh, I didn't even notice. Oh, that. I, I, I I auto corrected it in my brain. Fucking Siri. All right, so we close. And I was up. like, and I sent you that meme back because I was like, what does think yeah. ass skin? I don't think you. I don't think that's what he said. Uh, my yeah, me, my meme game is impossibly horribly uh, horrible. I just interpreted okay, so that as you just ass being like, skin makes more sense. Yes. Fuck off. Uh, all right, they close out the season with the Arizona Cardinals. That's a win at home, We're late just, in the season. Yeah, I, I'll, cliff falling uh, off a cliff. I'm gonna. 
Well, it's funny you said that because past the cliff, yeah, for yeah. sure, past the cliff, cliff point in the season. Over the cliff, over the cliff, <laughs> Kingsbury. I think is his name now. <clears throat> that's that's a good movie poster. It's instead of the Stallone <laughs> over the top ha- uh, arm wrestling, it's a cliff. Over Kingsbury. the cliff. <laughs> All right, so uh, we got through the season, Sean. Yep. I have them winning six games, six wow. and eleven. Sean, you have them going nine and eight. Very conservative. Some say cowardly proje- projection. No, because I and think I think they have a they have a good roster. A good roster. Your your floor is only so bad. Like uh, and Sean Shanahan. Like it could I, be Trey Lance and Brock Purdy. That's and also Trey true. Lance hasn't exactly thrown a ton of passes in live regular season NFL. We got so I do think. Big passes this week, Ryan. Come on, preseason. <laughs> but look, I, 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 I'm, I get it, right? He could be good. He could be fun. He's athletic. But I also think people aren't quite. They lost Alex Mack. Trent Williams is there. I think a lot of other question marks on the offensive line. They could be a secondary that gets burned. So I'm just saying, I don't think people are giving them credit for a low enough floor. That's what I I, I came out here to stand with the uh, the floor truthers of uh, Trey Lance. I didn't realize you were going to be so high on Trey Lance, Sean, uh, <laughs> predicting him to potentially be a no. playoff team here. They're gonna- Make the playoffs bring back Jimmy G and go on oh, a run. That would be great. <laughs> uh, I got the chat with their predictions: Uh-oh. Cousin Mush ten and seven. Okay. Uh, uh, Bills Mafia DJ eight and nine. Wow. Trevor nine and eight. Holland Oats, uh, ten and seven, Great easy, man. easy. Uh, the YouTube uh, guy. I'm, I'm ten and seven. I'm with the chat. Katie's the chat with the chat. With ten me. and seven. Easy has him five and twelve. Terrell Ryan, eleven and six. See, Terrell's <gasps> Terrell's a young guy, and so the young. I feel like the young people are embracing this Trey Lance movement. Ryan and I, as, I- as the older crafty vets who have seen. We've had our hearts broken by <laughs> yes, exactly. We've yeah, had I mean, our hearts broken by uh, by these, you know. We we yeah. know when to yeah. when to accept. Yeah. Yeah. When 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 young guys are texting us about two hundred to one <laughs> Trey Lance MVP tickets, and then K- Katie comes on the show mm-hmm. and just scolds him. Yeah. I I I I don't <laughs> I get it. It's exciting to think about what he could be, but. Yes. Is he going to be Lamar Jackson? Is he going like which guy is he going to be? Because none of those guys it, did it. You, in their first you just year. have to compare him to Lamar or uh, or Lamar, Patrick but, Mahomes. But, but yeah, but all right, yeah, Lamar is the best. Lamar, kind. we knew what we were getting in college. Yes. That you knew that he could do that yeah. in the NFL. And I think the thing with Trey Lance and the reason why Shanahan wanted him over a Mac Jones or over a Justin Fields was because he didn't have as much experience so he could really mold him into his offense because even Jimmy G said it took him a couple of years. It's not a very easy offense to learn. So I understand why it happened, but it, we just haven't seen enough for anybody to be this excited. All right. All right, Ryan, uh, we're going to talk futures Ooh. and some uh, player props before we get to that shout out to trade coffee. I got my uh, coffee mug right here with some delicious trade coffee inside, you know, uh, trade coffee. It's perfect for the coffee snob or even a coffee novice. All you got to do is go to drinktrade.com slash SGP, take their coffee quiz, and they will personally match a ideal coffee flavor for you. And uh, again, like they, the, the roasts are just delicious. I always get the whole beans. I grind the beans Mm. myself, Ryan, Mm. you know, kind of blue collar guy grinding my own coffee beans. Trade coffee's delivered over 5 million bags of fresh coffee with more than 750,000 positive reviews. That's insane. You got a hand grinder. Uh, no, I have. Okay. It's built so you're in. Not, you're not that blue collar. Relax. <laughs> I, I I wonder if you can like actually. <laughs> well, yeah. I I would I should get a hand grinder and really just crank out the beans. The smell <laughs> is amazing. The taste is great. And uh, when you use our link, thirty dollars off your first order plus free shipping. Just go to drinktrade.com/sgp. That's more than forty cups of coffee for free. Uh, get started by taking their quiz over at drinktrade.com/sgp and let trade. Find you a coffee you'll love. That's drinktrade.com slash SGP for $30 off. And as always, brought to you by Dave. Dave is your buddy when you need a helping hand financially. Running a little low on cash. Don't worry, Dave is here for you. Dave's the banking app where you can get up to $500 instantly with extra cash, more money to fill your tank, buy a wedding gift, or catch up on your bills. Tackle those expenses that have been stressing you out. No interest and no credit check needed. Millions of people have already downloaded the Dave app to get the financial relief they need with extra cash. 
So if you're in a pinch, need some extra help, download Dave and think of it as a helping hand for future you. Download the Dave app from the App Store right now. That's D A V E. Sign up for an extra cash account, get up to five hundred dollars instantly. For terms and conditions, go to Dave.com/legal. Instant transfer fees apply. Banking provided by Evolve. Member F D I C. And shout out to the chat for musing a whole bunch of uh, awesome, awesome selections and notes. But Terrell, Terrell points out that they did want to make Lamar Jackson play a different position. So maybe it's not complete, <laughs> like maybe not, it's it, I, like Trey Lance wasn't getting any receiver talk, was he? No, no. So because he can throw it so far, Sean <laughs> ceiling. All right. So what are we looking at? All right. When Wait, has all right, so we'll uh, real quick? It's a flat ten. Yeah. So I'm going under. It's plus minus one hundred fifteen. Yeah. And shout out to win. We I don't think we've talked about this enough. They're doing minus one hundred five both ways on the win totals. Well, you're talking about it's 2022. Is I mean, it's, it's sad to think about this, but there, most places minus one fifteen. Yeah. The really ripping twenty. So minus one hundred five both ways. Yeah. Plus one hundred five over. Minus one fifteen under. That's where we're, Katie, you're on it. You, fl- you you went to the wind. To- Unfortunately, they're cowardly and they're they're laying out a, a flat ten. No. Are we taking over uh, under? Well, uh, I'm I'm not betting this in oh. you know in in my life because I think I see them right at ten. However, as a fan, of course, I'm going to lean over <laughs> on this one, especially as the odds are the same. I'm going I'm going under. Give me under at minus one hundred five, Ryan. Obviously, you're on the under. Any chance? Uh, to win the NFC West right now, it's at plus one seventy five over on WinBet. Katie, are you are you taking a shot to win the NFC West at plus one seventy five? Could they win the division at ten and seven? I know you mentioned you're not super high on the the Rams. I I'm skeptical again of Kyler and, and Arizona, but they seem to end up winning a bunch of games. Where are you at with them to win the NFC West at plus one seventy five? So I don't think that they're going to win the NFC West at plus 175, but I'm hoping this is a little bit of a reverse jinx and they actually end up doing it. Some books, you could actually take them to get finished, excuse me, to finish second in the NFC West. That's at like plus 190 where I found Mm, it. mm. I like that one. I think over three and a half wins in their division at minus 120 is a good one. They only went two and four versus the NFC West teams last year. They actually only beat the Rams, which is just so funny. But obviously the Seahawks got worse. No Russell Wilson Cardinals. We don't see them until week 10. So that's when Cliff goes over the Kingsbury Kingsbury. (laughs) So I feel like we can get over three and a half. I would rather do over three and a half wins in the division and second to win than to win the division. Okay. I like those Ryan. Lock me up from his playoffs. Plus one seventy five. Let me me jot that down. Cause I I also kind of like that really at nine and eight. Yeah. Tiebreakers. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's eight and nine, but nine and eight. Yeah, eight, nine and eight, eight and nine sound right. Kind of feels like you should have gone a little harder. Mm. <laughs> you're gonna miss playoffs. Nine and eight in the NFC. That could do it. Unfortunately, you're. We'll work out the tiebreakers before the divisional previews. Exactly. But, but uh, at at plus one seventy five, it doesn't take much. And and even if tra- we see this all the time, you know, if people are comparing him to, um, you know, Lamar Jackson or even like a Jalen Hurts. These running quarterbacks will miss a couple of games, and uh, you know Ryan mentioning Brock Purdy, like they are really thin at quarterback depth. Assuming you're not including Jimmy G, who apparently they didn't even give him a playbook. That yeah, you know, let the guy look at the plays at least. Pretend he's involved. So if if they miss, yeah, what's that about? If if Trey Lance, well, they don't they, want- they I mean Shannon had has come out and said he talked to Jimmy about it and said, hey, do you? Do you want to come to the game? Do you want to be on the <laughs> sidelines? Do you want to play? Because like, I didn't think that he wanted any of these things. And then I respected it. And so I feel like they're in conversation. I don't think Jimmy, I think Jimmy is mentally ready to move on and he doesn't even want anything to do with the Niners right now either. It, it is I, I funny it. though. It's like, uh, what kind of weird situation is that? You know, like it's your girl, your girlfriend leaves you. Hey, do you want to come over and watch me with the new boyfriends? Like, no, no, I'm total, not. total vet move. Just like, oh, okay, cool. Up you're to gonna- you. <laughs> yeah. to you. Yeah. I don't know. What, I don't know what you're do, but no, no, thanks on that you're, one. You're going to pay me to not be here and and note because uh, as Katie pointed out, they don't play the Cardinals till a little later in the season after the call of duty release date. So there is a new version of call of duty coming out on October 28th. Oh, for, wow. For those so, wondering. so yeah, that could, what, is, what does that mean? What is the call of oh. duty? I don't, oh, I don't Katie's know. not up to speed on Kyler being a fucking huge video game. Nerd. So there, there is uh Kyler Murray. Apparently oh, that it, he doesn't watch film. He's yeah, yeah they were. Games? Uh, supposedly that's why they included that clause is that he's a huge call of duty fan. And like people know his username and you can track 
like how much time they put in. And apparently his numbers, you know, who someone did a Reddit, someone did a deep dive on Reddit and found that his stats were generally worse. <laughs> When, when there they, was like a bonus going on for Call of Duty, when points. they release like new levels and stuff, <laughs> so wow. it's a little, little conspiracy theory. But that's right up our alley as far as uh, what we're getting down on. But but, but to, well, first of all, yeah, yeah. But just coming back to the Trey Lance thing, like if he misses a couple games, like they are they are really really can, in trouble. Can I there. can I say hot take? Super hot take. Why why is it more reasonable? To say Trey Lance has a Super Bowl case than it is Kyler Murray. It it seems like I mean I'm higher because it's Shanahan versus well, Kingsbury. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. But I, I I think if you're talking about nuclear cases where a quarterback takes it takes the step to be a Super Bowl winning quarterback, an MVP candidate, as you pointed out earlier, all the nerds are running up and betting that to grabbing those bets. I think I think it's more reasonable for me to think that Kyler can lead this team to being the best team in the conference. We pointed out most wins, Sean, fifty to one. Then Trey Lance as a Super Bowl contender, and the odds are much worse, right? The odds are much worse on Trey Lance to win the MVP now. The odds are much worse on the Niners to be the number one seed, have the most wins, whatever. So I I'm willing to bet towards the floor. Cause like you said, what's the, what's the backup plan? They burn Trey Lance or they burn Jimmy. Unfortunately it's fucked up. I'm with you, Katie. There's no, that, that, that something bad is going to happen in the future to the Shanahan family <laughs> or coaching tree, because you don't do Jimmy dirty like this. So look, I, I, uh, I it's hard for me to see it. I think we're going to, I can't wait for week one when they're in Chicago playing a competent, well coached defense to see what Trey Lance can really do in the regular season when it matters. And uh, yeah, any way I can fade him. Lucky for them, they're not up against a competent, well-coached offense. That's true. And we have a pretty good defense. So, you know, I mean, I think probably one of the weaker receiver rooms is in Chicago. And uh, how dare you insult Darnell Moody and Velas Jones like that. Yeah. Nikhil Harry rest in peace. Lock uh, easy pointing out lock of the year. Trey Lance under 3,300 and a half passing yards. Oh, I'm seeing uh I'm seeing Trey Lance as high as 3500. Oh, so updating under mm-hmm. uh, I'll go under 3500 passing yards for Trey Lance. I do like uh one Trey Lance over and that over is 10 and a half interceptions. Oh, because Sean, I wow. I mean, that's like Tom Brady throws 11 interceptions in a season. I get it he's going to throw less, but he's he's making his first year as a starting quarterback. 11 interceptions is very is doable. It, is it because he wears the flat brim? These young kids are like they Shanahan and Shanahan. He's one of trust. us. He's one of us. <laughs> I mean, he threw two interceptions. When, uh, when was the last time we had expectations so high for a completely unknown commodity based on one person's oh wow. opinion? No, I mean, Not it's, even yeah. And again, like the, it, he's an FCS guy. There's certainly a world where but and he didn't even like play his last year. There was the COVID year. Like the guy out. just hasn't played a lot of football. He just I, hasn't I played a lot it, of football. But if you look at the guys who opted out that year, went pro, there's been some injuries. Yeah. And, and oh yeah. Getting back to my uh interception prop, if people want to compare him to Lamar Jackson and maybe that style of offense, last year Lamar threw 13 interceptions in 12 games. And similar interception percentage, obviously very small sample with what um, Trey Lance put out on the field, but yeah, I mean, so disrespectful even to ten be and a half, comparing those two guys. Right well, now. I'm just saying, even if you're high on him, if you're high on Trey Lance and you're comparing him to Lamar Jackson, Lamar still went over this I, ten and a half. I recently drafted fantasy teams all night long, 24 hours. Shout out to Katie donated to the cause. Yes. Very cool of you. She'll be getting an autographed uh, <laughs> draft day poster. It's it's a po- we'll be back here Katie. It's a poster of my head photoshopped <laughs> on Kevin Costner's body. At, oh, you're gonna want to get that framed. It's I'm gonna sure. be perfect. Uh, <laughs> Trey Lance. I like. Got- well, you want to talk about who had the most interceptions last year? Well, Matthew Stafford. Well, Ooh. Oh, wow. Just a random random drive by. Watch out. I say all of that to say Trey Lance is being drafted ahead of Patrick Mahomes. Trey Lance is being drafted ahead of Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Joe oh, Burrow, yeah. Russell Wilson. And it, it just, at some point the hype becomes the ceiling and yeah, I just I, look, I don't want bad things to happen to Niner fans. I don't want, I don't want you to be sad all year because Jimmy G has gone and the team sucks. But 
I think people are blindly coming into the season with a level of faith that Shanahan is going to roll this kid out and he's going to be fucking amazing because he because his Pentagon on the Raz meter is really big and bright and he's and we see him throw in preseason and it's just like whoa. But the second he has to think, I nail Justin Fields for this all the time. The second he has to think and process, like what's that going to look like? I don't know. I can't tell you. I've I've seen him have to do that on a, on a regular basis no, and, against and, NFL defenses. And so gonna, I'm excited. Mm-hmm. Huh? Mm-hmm. What about? But uh, yeah, I'm the I'm the under guy this year. So you know I was coming in there. Oh, under you're, on this there team. was never a doubt. I mean, I'm also on the under. I just maybe slightly higher because they've. You know, when I go full hate mode on the 49ers, they seem to burn me. And I have a soft spot because they won me so much money in the playoffs. Uh, and they beat I the. Thought you were gonna say me. Oh, yes. Katie and the fact that they beat the Dallas Cowboys in the playoffs basically, you know, talked me off of uh, tying up a noose after the Eagles loss. And it just <laughs> a beautiful victory over the Dallas Cowboys. So I probably have a soft spot for them there. What about, what about fantasy? Mm. I've we beat the Trey Lance horse to well, death, but D- Debo sure. prop in the chat. Easy okay, yeah. point out over uh, under four and a half rushing touchdowns for Debo. Yeah, Sam. what do you make of Debo and his yeah, rushing thing? Like he, he six of ten or more yards last year or something like yeah, that. Yeah, it, it seemed like seem he was. Repeatable. Yeah, are they going to use him as a, as a running back as much? It's it's weird. I don't know what to make of it. So I'm going under um, on mm. this one. Mm. So he had 365 rushing yards eight rushing touchdowns in the 2021 regular season. And his new deal is interesting because it's very incentivized. So he gets $650,000 for each year that he has 380 or more rushing yards. He gets $150,000 if he scores three rushing touchdowns in any one season. But like I said, the Niners are trying to bring in six running backs on the depth chart because they run the ball so much. One of our biggest, you know, uh, uh, no pun intended, but our Achilles heel is that our running backs end up going down, but you have Trey Lance now who's going to be mobile to your point earlier, Ryan, when he has to think, what is he going to do? He's going to use his legs just like Justin yeah. Fields does because when in doubt, they just start running. So I feel like that's going to cut down a little bit. I still think he's going to get the ball. He's still going to be the big guy, but you've got Sermon, you've got Mitchell, you've got Lance. I think those numbers are going to be smaller, but again, he is still incentivized. So I expect him to still be this wide back, but a little bit of a regression. Love, in numbers. love that nugget about the three, the incentives. We know that teams want to be cool and get their guys paid their bonuses. So knowing it's three touchdowns, uh, that that would make me a little worried. Did you notice the first running back name she said there? Sermon, Trey mm-hmm. Sermon, Undertaker meme. Is Apparently, Trey, is Trey he looks Sermon good. out of the uh, out of Shanahan's doghouse? Ryan and I burned a lot of uh, oh, best ball picks on Trey he, Sermon last out. year. He's out. Yeah, he he's good. had, I think. No, he's out of the doghouse. He's out of the dog. Well, Mitchell right now is is injured, so Mitchell's gonna actually be out for all of training camp, possibly the first game and sermon seemed to be the guy in the first preseason games. I believe he got about six different um, tries there, six different snaps or whatever. I can't think of what the, what I call it right now, but he's out of the doghouse. They're definitely pushing him. I think that sermon and Mitchell are going to be like the one, two guys. Well, I just Trey sermon coming back into my life. I'm going to have to draft him a little bit, just like I've, I've had to pivot to Brian Robinson real hard. Uh, well, especially because Mitchell is injured right now. So yeah, they're really pushing sermon. He just, so, he was so badly in the doghouse. Like Shanahan really is all over the place, all over the place. All right. Uh-huh. So, anything else? Uh, Yeah. Let's see any other. No, that's about it for me. Trey Lance right. under 3,500 passing yards over 10 and a half interceptions, miss playoffs plus 175 under 10 minus 105 over on win bet. Katie is uh, on the over leaning over. She likes second place uh, finish, but really likes the over three and a half division wins, right? Any other? Yes. Uh, and so what last question, what do we think about Ayuk? I know there's like stuff. Oh, Hey, maybe he is yeah. a better match for Trey Lance's passing style. Could he be a fantasy sleeper? What's your take on Ayuk? Well, I will want to have one more bet that you guys are missing, oh, yes. but oh, wow. Ayuk, I absolutely love, and I don't know if you've seen any of the chatter about him and, um, uh, who's our big O-liner. Why am I blanking on his name right now? Um, your O-lineman. Yeah. Help me out here. Yes. The, See, the, we talked about him earlier in the show Trent being like Will- the number one guy, Trent Williams, Trent Williams. 
Yes. So Trent Williams and I, you've gotten a fight um, during training camp a couple of times. And I guess it's that Trent Williams is like, I really believe in Ayuk. I think that he could be that guy. So I'm pushing him a lot in training camp right now so that he can really step up and play to his full ability. So I feel like the team, the players are kind of thinking that Ayuk could be that guy for uh, Trey Lance and, you know, Trent Williams certainly putting on the pressure there. So I feel Mm. like could be a good year for Ayuk. Okay, sleeper Ayuk, Ryan. Keep your eye on I him. I still think uh, if I on the off chance I draft Trey Lance in best ball, <laughs> which now I have to start drafting a little bit of Brock Purdy. Okay, but on the wow. off chance I draft Trey Lance in best ball, I have enjoyed pairing him with Juwan Jennings late. Uh, he's an I, I don't know, uh, but yeah, I, I do think it's going to be interesting because I I can't imagine. Like, how do you not use this Ayuk guy? It, again, Shanahan just coming off. I don't know if it, it's a stubborn thing or if Ayuk just doesn't get it. But and and Fred Warner, I think, was uh, the fight. Um, oh, Fred Warner, you're right. Yeah. Yes, it was Fred Warner, not Trent Williams. Sorry, yes, Fred Warner was the one that was pushing him. Uh, yeah, did, wouldn't make did, sense. Uh, was the did he walk up to the and say, uh, <laughs> "Hold my dick" or whatever? Mac That's Jones what Mac did. Jones said uh, before there was like Hold a massive fight at the, bitch. at the Patriots. He uh, said that to a defensive <laughs> lineman, which is kind of Badass. a. It's kind of a pitch move by the whoa, quarterback because you know wait, they wait. can't. Who said hold my dick to who? <laughs> uh, Mac Jones said it to one of the what was it the defensive line or maybe the cornerback, someone wow. on the defense of the Patriots, which it, it's kind of a shitty move as a quarterback because you know they can't hit you. Um, so it's kind of a soft move by McCorkle there. But Katie, you, uh, Katie, you said you had uh, one more uh, bet you wanted to give out. Yes, Nick Bosa, over 11 and a half sacks. I mean, the guy is absolutely crazy. We talked about him earlier today. He had 15 and a half sacks in 2021, up from nine in the 2019 season. Of course, he was injured in 2020. According to Pro Football Focus, Bosa was the most double teamed edge rusher in the league last wow. year. And look, they picked up Drake Jackson from USC. They've been looking for that. Batman, or excuse me, is Robin to this Batman. I just feel like it's he's going to make some big plays. It's a big year for Bosa. And his father came out. I don't know if you heard. Big Bosa came out and said that it was blasphemy that he only got one vote for uh, comeback player of the year last year. So he said that Bosa is coming for defensive player of the year this year. He Ooh. felt disrespected. He looks yoked. So for him <laughs> to get double digit sacks, 11 and a half all day. Bosa? Uh, Dog. Most, Bosa's dad's hanging out with Tatis's dad, <laughs> saying crazy shit. <laughs> Bosa, most sacks, 10 to 1. Okay. Yeah, that's kind of a fun one. As Nick well. Bosa's ten to one. Joey Bosa's twelve to one. That's some serious DNA right there. Those Bosa studs. All right, Ryan. Any uh, any more picks? Uh, if you wanted to, I, I I don't hate the defensive player of the year uh, for Bosa. It's fifteen, for Bosa. It's fifteen to one. I I do like if I'm gonna. If I'm going to do anything, pr- I, I can believe that more than I can believe Trey Lance is going to win the MVP. <laughs> I can say that like that, that would be the way I'd frame that up. So I'll, I'll sprinkle cause B- Bosa, one of the Bosa's is going to be a monster. And Nick Bosa to your point was a monster without much help. I mean, Kinlaw was banged up to, like they're, they're getting reinforces reinforcements. And if they, if they have to like not double him every time he's trouble. So it's the one thing that I think makes this defense potentially good enough to like, like Sean's version, Sean's model prediction of nine and eight. To me, that's a world where Nick Bosa is flirting with the defensive player of the year. Yeah. Right. Right. Right there in the mix. Right. So 15 to one, we'll put, we'll lock that up. All right, Katie. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Always appreciate it. Make sure you follow Katie on Twitter at Katie Mox. Make sure you subscribe to her podcast, Moxie bets. With Katie Mox, uh, big news I'm sure coming down the line for you. Rocket ship uh, is uh, taking off for Katie Mox. Appreciate the time, Katie, and uh, best of luck with the Niners this season. Thank you so much. I hope to prove Ryan wrong. <laughs> Thank you for participating in the Sports Gambling Podcast. For the Sports Gambling Podcast, I'm Sean, second the Money Green, and he is Ryan. Yeah, I also can't wait to hear about our Eli Manning meet <laughs> Kramer. Let it ride.